Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for November 6, 2019 at uh, 6 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, um, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be um, recorded on video. If you come to the mic tonight, please state your name and where you're from. And um, so we'll uh, call the meeting to order. Um, we have a, we were just going to adjust the agenda a little bit because um, Chris Curtis is here to talk about the, um, the review and, and discuss the round four uh, grant for the MVP program. Um, so maybe we could just pull that forward. We don't have any minutes tonight. So just in, in fairness of time so we can get people out, we could adjust this, this um, ag agenda around if it's okay with everybody. Is that okay? Oh, okay, yeah. great. Uh, come on up, Chris. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Is this a good spot for me? Yeah, sure. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, Chris, just make sure you're, you have to introduce yourself. Yes, yep. our state your name. Okay, I am Chris Curtis, and I'm the town's uh, consultant for the Municipal Vul Vulnerability Preparedness Program. And then I'll just say one thing. Um, our, unfortunately, our speakers aren't working tonight, so anything, if all of us can talk loud for anybody in the audience. Um, I think the, the speakers out to the TV work okay, TV okay. land, but um, just in here. So, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for getting me on the agenda. Um, sure. Appreciate it. Uh, so we are working on a, uh, as you said, a round four uh, grant application for MVP. As you know, we've been funded for three um, rounds already under this program, and it's been um, a, a really successful program for Deerfield in the sense that we've been able to move some projects forward that were high on the priority list. And so this next round, we want to continue that same um, type of activity. Uh, and there are a number of key projects that we have put into the grant application that um, I'd like to go through with you and just kind of summarize and talk about the budget in particular. This is um, what I've handed you as a handout is a um, draft. Uh, the grant application is actually due on November 14th. So we have a, a, about a week still to, to work on this. Um, can I uh, just interject real quick? I just, for those in the audience and we're at special, or our special town meeting, right? We just had, we had, we had kind of back and forth decided whether we were gonna tackle phase four. And um, I think it, in research that Carolyn has done, you know, she had found out maybe the engineering on the Kelleher thing would maybe be a little bit more affordable, so we, we may want to tackle and go after that grant. I mean, we, we had pulled it off of one of our articles, well, right? Well, we pulled it off the article because we... Um, we just didn't know what we'd have or... We didn't know what our um, numbers were, and the Finance Committee did not want us to ask for money... Without knowing what we were the, doing. Well, yeah. Right. So they, just want to make it clear so that... So we're always behind the eight ball because they don't want to, like, preload... How yeah, much we're gonna do. and that was that was the option at, at special town meeting was just to take a chunk of money and put it in an account for the MVP program, and we didn't know how much. We didn't know what we'd be tackling, so um, so I guess we kind of go reverse and ask for it after. Um, but I just wanted to make it clear to people that you know, just several weeks ago we thought we may not go forward with phase four, but um, I guess the landscape changes in this grant program quite often and fast and as you said we only have a couple weeks to get the application in and it right. just opened up and then you're mandated I think spend it by June so June it's really tricky you know for municipalities to try and juggle all of that and the schedule of getting money and asking money and all that so I just want to make that clear to people so sorry about that no sure and and on the topic of schedule um, this round of grants uh, it does have some flexibility in the sense that if a town feels like they cannot complete a project by June 20th of 2020, there is an option to extend the contract for a full year beyond that to, oh, to 2021. Great. We do have to specify that up front right. um, and make that decision. And so as we go through the project, maybe we can think sure. about that a little bit, yeah. whether that is that new. Sense. Is that new in this round? Versus? It is, yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. It's good news. So the... Um, just kind of take a quick uh, run through the tasks here. The, the top priority one and number, task one is the construction of the replacement cul 
culvert at Kelleher Drive where it uh, crosses Bloody Brook and that's um, across the street from Frontier High School. Yep. Uh, the um, engineering and design for that is being done by Ty and Bond under the current MVP Round 3 grant and um, that project is just beginning so we, uh, we don't have engineering plans completed yet but based on a preliminary estimate from Ty and Bond, um, the number that they have given us is three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars for the for the construction cost. That that's not including the engineering um, administration piece of it. Um, so as you can see from the the sort of total budget for that task, it's four hundred thirty-five thousand, um, including the engineering costs. Um, and that is substantially less than um, I think what some of us thought the, right. the cost of that culvert replacement right. might be. So that's right. the good news. Right. That's why right. I, had, I had gone to that meeting um, for small bridges. For small bridges, but the authorization is not until this coming year. So I mean, it's tapped out for this year. So the small bridge program. Yeah. So this is ideal to be able to do this, and I, I think it's reasonable under here. And so um, what? And our share of that money that we would have to come up with would be about 108,000. That's correct. Um, and that's based on a 25% match. Yeah. Um, there's some modest amount of the match that could be drawn from in-kind sources, you know, basically the staff time that goes sure. into administering the, the project. It's not a lot. Right. Um, so most of that would be a cash match. And how, how do we, I mean, what kind of buckets? Is that something that can be from uh, capital stabilization. I, w I would um, look at capital stabilization or um, go to the finance committee to uh, um, and ask them that we could. They only have 100. Right, but we could um, ask them to support a special town meeting in the spring um, because we don't need this money until, until this goes out to bid and we actually have to pay some bills. And it sounds like it would be by the time all that happened, it would be well, after June, to, anyways. Right. Well. And you have. We have annual I, I want I want Chris I already sent poor Chris an email but we have we, you want to protect public safety and public health and we're going to put in the mosquito whole mosquito thing in it and I mean because of our trapping and testing that's the menorah mosquitoes are there for this both Tripoli and West Nile so you're moving stagnant water you're allowing this so I mean we can under the new MVP, you are allowed to do your mosquito expenses mm -hmm. under it. So this is a huge priority for the mm -hmm. governor. So we want to make sure that we add in public health reasons. Mm -hmm. And I bet we can get, I mean, I bet we'll get this money. So we need to move on it. And, and I don't think we have to go to town meeting. And, or we can, usually what we could do is have a special town meeting before our annual town meeting. And that should be more than enough time. Because we have to go out to bid for this, right? And, we do. And, and we wouldn't be doing it in spring. We'd be but doing it in don't, the summer. Don't you have to have authorization to spend before you go ahead and spend? Like I mean, line up a contract. I mean, you, well, we, we have, have to money. secure we the have money. money. We have money in our capital. Um, but I think we have to pigeon that, like figure out what we're going to do. Well, I would rather not move it out of stabilization. But if if that's where we want to take the money from, that's fine. I just want to make sure we're putting it back in. But this is 75% of the culvert cost. So there isn't anybody in town that doesn't think that this would be a good way to spend money. I get it. I, yeah, I just want to make sure that we're... We have money. We have a million dollars in stabilization and we have, you know, 400000 or or 300000 whatever it is in stabilization, capital stabilization. This certainly qualifies for capital stabilization. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can have a special town meeting, but we have to sign you know we get the what happens is they award this money and that's why we wanted money from you know but the finance committee didn't want to support us just asking for random hundred thousand dollars or right. hundred fifty thousand dollars just to set aside for the MVP program but the governor every time that governor gets money he puts it in a pocket and we're in line to collect so why not we're getting stuff done in town it's 
the hot thing to do. So we're doing it. So the, the timing issue here, just to be clear about this, um, applications are due in, in a week, but the awards probably won't happen, I'm guessing, until early January, something like that. We have the design plans that are currently in the works with Ty and Bond. They probably won't be done until the spring. They're not really due until June. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it probably, I, I need to talk to Ty and Bond, but I wanted to get your input on this too. It might make sense to shift this into the, the next fiscal year, the, the one that um, ends June 30th of 2021, mm -hmm. um, which would give you, know, you <coughs> more time. Don't you do have the to. The only thing is, I don't think that, I mean, the problem with that is we're, we're doing this on a tight timeline. Ty and Bond said that they would come with the design plans so that we could do it this summer. Yeah. Because I don't think that thing is going to last another whole year. Well, that's, that's why I wanted I, to I talk mean, to you about it. Right. Right. And if we can get 75% paid for by the MVP program, this is a smart thing to do. Well, I'm not suggesting you take it out of the application. Yeah. It's, I'm just saying there's two different categories you can put it into and, and you can shift it. As you see down at the bottom of this budget, there's tasks to be completed by June 30th, 2021. Mm -hmm. We could potentially shift this piece down to that and, and still do it during the summer months, but not have, have to have it done by June 30th, which may be a little bit of a tight timetable considering right. the bidding process and so forth. Well, what we want to do is ask them for an extension till September. Because if you, we will be disadvantaged if we go to the 21, and we don't actually want to be 21 anyway. We want to do it in the summer, this summer. So what we ask for is an extension till September 30th, 20, from the June. So you 20th. want to apply for it in the 2020 category? Yes. And keep it the way it is. Okay. Right, and say that okay. we would like the extension based on the fact of weather. You know, use the excuse of weather or whatever because it will only take a week or so to do it Yeah. from what Ty and Bond says. That's why the estimate to is so cheap. Work. Yes. Yeah, so, but you need a week of good weather and you need a week of low flow. And it, you know, if we have bad weather. It's frankly, it's the advertising and the bidding process know, that can take longer. You don't longer. say that. You just say we want an extension based on weather, Yeah. which is legit. And then we're not disadvantaged by going to 2021. As soon as we say 2021, we're up against all kinds of everybody else's projects. That's probably true. Yes, yeah. it is true. I went to those meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I know who people yeah. are like clamoring. So yeah. we got to, as long as they keep funding us and they keep giving us money, then we need to keep having something. So what happens if um, we go through this process um, and they don't fund us? Then we have what? to. Then we wait and pray Which is that a realistic right. possibility, I, I, I must say. You know, I think in this round, the competition right. will be much, much, much heavier than That's it has been. That's why we been. have to put in the mosquito thing. Yeah, um, because there's a lot more MVP certified communities now than there were before. No, and a lot, a lot of communities are seeing that communities like Deerfield are reaping the benefits of the program and they, and they want to participate more actively in it. Right. So it'll be tougher. Um, but what the answer to your question, I think, is is that we simply reapply in the next round. And, and there is supposed to be another round um, as soon as January. Uh, they're, they're really, you know, sort of pushing this program out pretty quickly. Yeah. So that's what we would, what we would and, do if and we... And the governor's hoping by June of 2020, he'll have some regular revenue. And, and we're going to hopefully have it funded like, you know, Chapter 90 kind of money every year. You'll have consistent funding. Right. Would we want to discuss this with finance committee? Um, I, I wouldn't even worry about it until we know we got the money. I mean, until the governor announces that we get the money. We can just tell, ask Skip, does he, how does he want to, um, yeah. you know, if he wants to, us to go to the Capitol or just have a special town meeting for it. Because we're not going to be able to do it until the spring. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know. And we want, and we need to, and we'll have the information in January. I, I think they're gonna, they'll let us know in the end of December, I bet, because January is the next round. And it seems like, you know, they, they want to award it and then move on, award it and move on. Yeah. So I the, think the RFP might say something about awards are expected in early January, though. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 
It just sounded like they were going to let us know ahead of time, in you know, the end of December. But I mean, end of December or January doesn't matter. Right. It, it pushes us off until the, you know, February time frame, and we can decide. I mean, we can post a special town meeting for this, Trevor. I know. I'm just. To. I just. Yeah. Worry about where the cash is. You know. Well, and I think you know that's everybody's worry about the capital and how we spend it. But right. I think it's also prudent to be applying for these because mm -hmm. that's a culvert that's going to fail at some point in time in the near future. Mm -hmm. um, if we have funding grant-wise ahead of time, it's better than saying, okay, that just failed and we have to come up with $500,000 without any mm -hmm. help. Um, now, if they award us the grant and we don't use it, what happens? Because, say, the Finance Committee, or we can't get the additional funding. We just the money goes back. The money yeah. just goes back, right? Right. You know, obviously it's a little bit of a black eye for the right. town. Yeah. Right. But, uh, but I think money. that's yeah. what what would happen is you'd turn the money back to the state and they'd re, you know reallocate it in the next round. Yeah. Right. Because you know we. One of the reasons we keep getting it is because we're using it. Yeah. And you know Mill Village has yeah. been well, fairly long project, but um, the uh, we got Kelleher Drive. Um, there's so many sections of River Road that are threatened to be lost. I know. <laughs> right. Um, it's almost like you almost have to put a whole new road around the base of the mountain instead of going along the river. Yeah. Um, because it just keeps collapsing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I know. There's at least three spots on River Road that really are bad. That are bad. And yeah. There are several hundred thousand. So, so that's, you know, there's a lot of things there that, right. you know, it's. That's why if we have the opportunity. To get 75% reimbursement, you know, I'm going to go to town meet. We'll set up a town meeting. What the mm -hmm. heck? I mean, you just you just don't not take three quarters of the cost of, right. of the replacement because we know we have to replace it. And 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 it's so much better to do it on a planned basis than to have the thing collapse next week and then have. I mean, we do have engineering in the process, but the and fact I just is, feel like, is, I feel like we need to get a better. Discussion going with the finance committee about why we're funding this stuff. I mean, we talked about it a bit, and then we just kind of like didn't. Um, well, because what we they can were do, like, you know. But I think that if if this is seriously what we're doing, um, then we just need to make you know a chunk of money. Or I don't know. How, can you set up well, an account, a capital stabilization for MVP? Well, no. What we can do is. Um, I will bring this up at the capital improvement meeting right. in December, they should be getting and this stuff and, on there and then ask them plan. to make a recommendation to the finance committees that we have money set aside for the MVP as part of the capital plan. Right. Because These we intend should be on the capital plan. Because we intend to do this. What what's why this has never showed up before is because I've been able to use federal matches with state matches, and we've been able to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Not that not to the cost of the town over the years, but the problem is there's, there's nothing no there's no federal anymore. Right. The NRCS. I'm not saying that there isn't, because as soon as we have an event, I'm going to be applying for the MVP. I mean the EWP money for River Road, but mm -hmm. we haven't had enough of an event to do any kind to get them out here mm -hmm. to look at the whole road, but. That's still that. I mean, that's like a million dollars or two million dollars mm -hmm. or whatever. So, I mean, that's a lot. That's a big project. So, we need an event, and then we'll get them out here and we'll look at it. But, you know, the farm bill money hasn't been released, and they haven't still. even got the ru rules and regulations. And that expired September of last year. Wow. Of last year of 18, wow. and then it was renewed in December of 18. And then rules and regulations haven't even been promulgated yet. I mean, and it's a five-year thing, and you've already gone. A year. A year. And I know. So it's really, I mean, your federal agencies don't have the ability to hand out money to us unless it's an emergency. Right. And that's, that's a congressional, you know, thing that, right. you know, it's a national thing. And there's plenty of stuff happening in the Midwest. So that is continually funded. So whatever little squirrely amount of money comes to Deerfield is going to be fine because they're milling tens of millions of dollars oh, out there. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So, sorry, but, I mean to keep sorry. sidetracking, oh, but no, it's okay. just we were just talking over all money. This stuff. So, yeah, no, I but having this is 100% on us and this MVP program now, which I mean, it's still a really good deal. It is. And it's not like it's money that we're trying to get to improve the parking lot here at the town mm. or something. This is something that's being used to mitigate yeah. a potential disaster. Yeah, people right. need to be get, and, to get out of their house. Yeah. Um, you know, because I don't think uh, Dave Johnson is going to want people driving through his driveway to get to Keller Drive for a long period of time. Right. But uh, right. it's, uh, it's just, you know, so. Well, I, we do have to talk to the Finance Committee about yeah. mm -hmm. putting some money aside for culverts on a regular basis. Yes. Um, we have 119 identified. And some of them are only twenty or $30,000, but some of them are like this. Yeah. It's three or 400000 and yeah. or five hundred, and You know, so we, we do have to figure out some kind of game plan. Thank you, Chris. Sure. I know, I, I know, I'm beating on you all the time, but we uh, we can get our story here. We just have to beef this up a little bit with the mosquitoes. Okay. So the second task is similar to the first one in that it's um, the construction and installation of something that's being designed under the third round of the MVP grant. We're um, having um, an engineer, EBI is their name, uh, design eight tree box filters for the town center, which would collect the stormwater runoff from the town center and keep it from going directly into the brooks and, and causing additional flooding. And they're also doing uh, two rain gardens. Uh, there's two that would be done at the Deerfield Elementary School. That would be for the, the roof of the school and for the parking lot there. Mm -hmm. Again, try to retain as much stormwater on site, reduce the amount of flooding in the, in the Bloody Brook area. Um, those are the goals. So this so grant. With, with that, um, you know, we have a lot of complete street work going on. We had a meeting last night about the town common committee and complete street uh, work. And I just want to make sure that those two things are getting dovetailed so that they understand, like, they're not designing one for that's going to be ripped up. Right. You know, it, it, there's a lot, a lot of different projects, as we talked about last night, a lot of different programs going. that on, thir on Friday. Yeah, because yeah, know, ninety percent of the time, as soon as you pave a road, they're going to put a pipe down there. Right. <laughs> right. I just want to try and get it all all done, you know, at the same time and coordinated. So okay. That has come up a few times. The coordination with Complete Streets, okay, and, and we do want to try to make sure that that happens. Um, and again, so I've I've got to sort of check in with Ty and Bond about their timing on, on right. that, and that might affect whether this project would you know, Move. go in the current fiscal year or not. Right. Um, so the budget for this one, including, um, again, engineering services for construction administration, uh, comes out to 225,000. The match is 56,500 on, on this one. And again, that's for eight tree box filters and two, two rain gardens. Do we, you can't use um, the state, it has to be federal money or private money for the matches, right? It can't be state to state. Correct. Okay. Yep, that's exactly right. It has yep. to be either town money, it can, it can be federal money, that is yeah. an option. Because there's 319 money too, and um, we have stormwater regs, so we've met the requirement for 319, the, you know, the initial thing. So 319 is considered federal money, even though it comes through the state. Right. But they can't, they hardly can give it away. So if we could do some drainage money through 319, if we could prove that we're cleaning up Bloody Brook, I, you know, because part of that is, you, you know, you have um, degraded water. And, and, and so we're putting it in this open bottom culvert. And this would really give us a, an extra push on the um, you know our extra points for the for the three night for the culvert if we can apply for the 319 because you're cleaning up 
and filtrating water that's running off. And that's what we're doing is we're capturing water. So, yeah. but it, is this task like a real priority? You know, to me, I'm, I'm just thinking of all that we're looking at doing and I'm, like well, I get Kelleher. Tree yeah, but it's boxes, all, it's uh, all, yeah, but it's know, all but it's, related. But and what we're so trying to do. to do. Then, I mean, I'm thinking like, there is so much I want to do, m m way more than putting tree boxes in. Um, Except that's part of your drainage for your I complete get it. streets. I get it. I mean, you're trying but to clean up the drainage and keep us off from any MS4. I understand that. You know, and but this keeps just if we're applying I'm, for I'm 319. About but if priorities. we but if we apply for 319, then we're using federal money and not our money. I get that is too, but fifty thousand is any our type money. of estimate. What, what type of fifty thousand is our water money. retention? No, it would be to save us from going for. into the sewer system from the tree box you filters. You apply yeah. for three nineteen. We will get that information again. This is because we're using we're doing all this stormwater filtration, <laughs> and we're cleaning up Bloody Brook. This is this is another uh, project that's going to be under design starting now. Um, so we have a company called EBI that's doing the design on this. And uh, they will be finished in the spring with their design plan, so they will have those kinds of numbers for us when they've completed the work. The other thing I want to say about this one is it's MVP, as we've talked about before, is not a culvert replacement program. I know so we're trying if, to mix it up, but I, I still, like, we, there's so much more I want to do in town than tree yeah. boxes. If I mean, I do want tree boxes, but I want it in conjunction with, like, streetscape, sidewalk, like, yeah. all of that all at That's one time. That is streetscape. No, I get it. But it, in, in, I, I just want to make sure they're not in isolated things that I'd love to have an overarching plan of how that all looks and ties into. That's what we're supposed to Am I missing this? You haven't well, said me, a word tonight. So let me just, can you please? So I want to just pipe in a little bit about the tree boxes. So, I mean, I think just to allay some of your fears, I mean, Kevin is, you know, Kevin and I are at these meetings and we're driving the complete streets process and this, you know, he's involved in this process very much. He's out there citing the tree boxes and the, and the rain gardens for that matter. But he knows, um, we've talked about these things. We talked with, with Mike, the designer, about the challenges of the changes of, might come, structural changes, expanding sidewalks, um, where things might be moved. So these are all considerations. We're trying not to do what we often do is just keep waiting and waiting, waiting, and then do nothing. I, I get it, <laughs> so, but my, my biggest concern is I would love to see a plan of downtown uh -huh. with the common on it and the sidewalks on it. And see, like, I'll drive through Great Barrington, Lenox, uh -huh. Pittsfield, you name it, and they, they have tree boxes, rain gardens, mm -hmm. and I'm all for yeah. that. But I, I, yeah. I want to make sure it is in one yep. Yep. We plan, talked about this. We, like we, one, I, like I, that it just all well, matches. I'm and hoping it yeah. will. Because yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to so get Nobody's talking to each yeah. other. No, 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 we are. We are, like, <laughs> you know, no, we so, are. <laughs> we're talking. And we're talking. We haven't had joint meetings. I haven't seen a any schematic of downtown at all yet, and maybe that's way down the road, but I... I'm very concerned like we design all the thing and then we have to like redesign it because it doesn't match with what we're mm -hmm. what our vision we haven't really talked about what our vision of what Elm Street looks like and the common looks like and do we close down park and we've had all these meetings and little things mm -hmm. but never a large overarching conversation on this like we did that charrette that time or it was before mm -hmm. my time and I know that's a pain and a ton of work but it like we need a lo a large vision for this, and I'm mm -hmm. concerned that. Well, we could be one. That could be one of the breakouts for our um, February 29th. Um, that could be actually. That's a really um, pretty good idea. I just want to. We're doing the climate we're resiliency doing the day. Climate change Green resiliency. <laughs> Great. On, um, Green scheme. Um, yeah. Leap yeah. leap year 20. Tw um, 229. 229. <laughs> Okay. And that's part of what's being funded here. Yeah. And and the idea is to, you know, energize the kids. The community, and, yep. And energize and get plans and and one of the breakouts could be the downtown and that we could really that visualize stuff so people can have some pictures of in their minds what's happening. What it looks because like and why we're yeah. looking to spend fifty thousand on this. What we're trying, to, what we're when trying I to do to is is get the years. state to pay, whether it's through complete streets, three nineteen federal money or you know, which comes through the state, or the MVP program is the underground drainage. Mm -hmm. You can't make 
the pretty flowers and have our common beautiful. I know if you don't without have the structure. having all the stuff underneath. I just wanted and to. And we want to try to get the, all that paid for, not by us. Got it. And, and, I, and I agree with that. I just wanted to make okay. sure that we're not doing this stuff isolated. And um, well, I've been struggling to, for four I'm, years to get trying. something done on that common. And I know we're close, but we've been close for a long time. And I, I'm really like, I need them to come up with a plan. I don't understand why they're so, what, what the heck is going it's, on there? It's just, you know what? it's who owns no it, money. who doesn't it own it. It's, um, well, you know. Well, this is going to be resolved on Friday. Well, Maybe. Well, it <laughs> or we be. might cause more trouble. Well, um, but I'm, I just, I'm I really wanted really to get, um, I really I, want to do one thing for the residents and make that common safe to walk on and sit down in a nice spot. And, and then obviously rain gardens, we talked about rain gardens around the common to catch that water runoff, you know, from the streets. Um, and, and just all of well, that I think work. We're have a rain garden. I, I understand that, but we talked about like retaining that water on the edge because now it's like asphalt for a foot all the way around there. And we talked about digging that up and you know plants and, and landscape well, that, can, that can handle that. The, I just want to make sure all of that this is, happen. is to get rid of the impervious surface. Mm -hmm. That is what we, we have to do. That's the bottom line. Like that giant V, v. Of, of asphalt that's you, 700 feet have, across. We have asphalt everywhere, and we need to break it up and get rid of it and have much more greener scape. Mm -hmm. And that is the, what you're trying to do to be more resilient and plan for the future. I just want to... But it also happens to be very attractive. Mm -hmm. It People is. People will be very happy because it will make it, everything look beautiful. But you got to... You gotta get somebody to pay for this. Stuff I understand, first. but I, my only concern was that we would be making these, you know, I don't even know what they look like, but a four-foot boxes here and there, and they didn't really tie into the to the overarching vision that we that right. I have in my head, but you know, may not be what other people want. But I just, if we could all talk about how that looks and. I think we could have a breakout on that. Really? I think and, and that. people, that's a great maybe idea. Maybe we could have the breakout in the main room here because I think yeah. people would be pretty excited about that. I think that. that when I hear from residents, that's really what they're interested in is beautifying the center of our town and making sure that we well, have. clean up. Yeah, clean up, fix the sidewalks, fix the crosswalks. Just, clean up along Elm Street. Yeah. You know, and our weather road The businesses crossing, want to do it. Yeah. They just, yeah. You know, road crossing doesn't look too good. Be nice. Clean it up. Yeah. yeah, you fix it up in certain areas. So I, I just I wanted to make sure that we're capturing that. These weren't isolated yeah. things. No, that Chris and Mike are very much aware of what's going on with the node and the time bond and Complete Street. So that's all the intention okay. is to have all that be coordinated. Sorry for my nervousness. That's okay. no, a really well, good point. Well, it's just there's not a lot of communication. Makes a lot of sense to think about so. it that way. Hopefully, there's a lot more faith. I'm. I'm. Once we get money, then I. Then I. We just got to make sure we get the money. Mm -hmm. So we got to get in there because it's going to be harder and harder for us to get some money. And, and just my only thing was that there are plans going to be underway. And so those are getting designed now without any, you know, though by the time we get to February 29th, they're knee deep in those plans and we haven't really talked about what we want it to look like. Or uh, maybe. Uh, others have, I guess. So, but I just yeah, but I wanted a larger the surface. You can change the surface as long as you get the under done. Under, if you, as long as you get all the drainage done, mm -hmm. you can you can fiddle around with the top. All right. It that you know benches and tree mm -hmm. plantings and all that. That that's the tail end. Okay. You Sorry to wanna... drag this out. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's good discussion. It's really good to have good discussion. It is. We need it. It's helpful. Yeah. So right. task three is a design task, um, and it's sort of extending this idea of green infrastructure further into town, and in particular to Frontier High School. The, the primary thing that's gonna happen here is um, the design of a green parking lot at the high school that might include uh, porous pavement, yep. some rain gardens, some on-site drainage that would all contain all of that stormwater from a pretty large parking lot that right now goes into Bloody Brook yep. uh, and keep it on site. I have um, met with Darius Modesto about this, and he is um, supportive of the concept. Yes. Um, we've talked in detail about you know what it might involve and and the 
Frontier um, budget already um, has money for replacement of the parking lot. So w once we get to that stage of replacement, I think we'll apply for MVP perhaps for some of the green components, but the, the pavement costs would already be kind of covered by the by the budget that's been established. So um, I'm on that hope. subcommittee, and um, yes, we did talk about that. We we're trying to kind of figure out you know, Again, this cleans up Bloody Brook. Right. I mean, we're trying no, to No, I'm rid of excited payment. about it. Yeah, it makes, I mean, they need to do it, and it probably wouldn't be this year. It'll probably be next year. Like, we're trying to figure out the timeline of the capital projects there, but that right. would give us some time, and I think that would be a great opportunity to do that. Um, and do feels on the hook for 50% of that, so. Yeah, so we should have it look good. Yeah, so. It, do you it, think the impervious, I, I was under the impression that 91 from Hatfield to Greenfield was just paved with that material. Is that right? Why did I hear that somewhere? I heard that too. And I, I'm I don't know not, if it's accurate or not. I, I haven't been able to verify that, but I do right. know that there is porous pavement in the um, commuter parking lot at, in Waitley at uh, Route 5 and 10, oh, just, okay. just over here. And I went over and, and took a look at it. It's actually pretty interesting. They they used it in the parking spaces, but not in the travel lanes. Yep. And I think that's the same approach we would take at the high school. The travel lanes get sort of more use, more so they, they'd have a yeah. they'd have a more um, impervious pavement. But then you'd have the rain gardens to collect the additional runoff from that yep. piece. So you could capture all of it um, right. through the two mechanisms. And then, and then all the parking sp actual parking places would be just like the Waitley one with the, mm -hmm. with that pavement. Right. Yeah. I mean, sounds here, great. if sounds you look at it, idea. it really doesn't look it doesn't any, look any different. different. But I think when you look at it when it rains, it does, right? Cause yeah. It, 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 you know, you see where it's puddling here and not over here. Right. Um, it's definitely yeah. a different material. So that's great. Well, Darius said he went over and looked at it during the rainstorm that we had recently. Oh. And, and it was pretty impressive that the, the water was going right through the pavement. And there wasn't any, any buildup at all. No kidding. Um, so that's great. That was good. I okay. only went over there when that was... Um, that one time and it seemed to, I mean, it seemed to be working. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about that. That'd be great. They don't okay. have to remove all the old pavement from underneath it first. They do. They, yeah. They it would be a full, it would be a full depth reconstruction thing. piece. Right. They only milled it. They, they milled it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to put, you have to put a, so a gravel of, subsurface in, sub base in. That's why the installation is a little bit more expensive. It's more expensive to yeah. do it because you have to rip up the old, complete mm -hmm. rip up the old. Right. But it once it's old. done, yeah. nothing is sheeting off, and all your and everything is being filtrated. So you're you're getting higher quality, you know, runoff water. Right. Anything that goes into Bloody Brook ultimately is much reduced. I mean, it's not right. zero zero, but right, sure. But it's really reduced, and then it's also much cleaner because it's been filtrated. Yep. So okay. I mean, that's one of the reasons you we might be able to get a three nineteen to match this because again, we've identified Bloody Brook as problematic and a public health threat. And so this is part of cleaning up, moving the water, reducing the amount of water through there mm -hmm. and, and making sure that it's not um, habitat friendly to right. mosquitoes. Right, okay, great. Sounds good. So now, this- um, Does this represent the 50% that Deerfield's responsible for the frontier or is this the whole budget? It's the entire budget. Okay. Yeah. So the other pieces that go into this um, engineering component are also a green parking lot design for the Leary lot on North Main Street. Uh, mm -hmm. tree, tree box filters at four different locations. Um, the town hall parking lot out front here, two at the uh, Deerfield Elementary School, the entry area, mm -hmm. and one at near the Deerfield Inn and Historic Deerfield. And then um, there's also a rain garden design at the historic Deerfield Visitor Center and some nature-based drainage improvements and design for a new entryway at the Deerfield Elementary School. Yeah, that whole it's a big paved, paved area, right area there, we want to kind of fix that because yeah. it's a mess and yeah. it's old and there's big cracks. But yes, if we could do all, like tie all that design in at the same exactly. time, um, great. The, I just, when you're task three, um, when we get up to historic Deerfield, that's the um, that's seven years in a row that they've been tested positive for West Nile up there. So mm. that would be that box is really important up there because, okay. again, you're cleaning up the drainage and a public health risk in, up there. Um, we, okay. We, 
so you're feeding me really helpful information for the main body of the grant application, I which I have to write tomorrow. <laughs> so that's, I know. that's I'm sorry, but I, we, you know, the governor is really big on this, so I think this will give us a whole bunch of big new points. Yeah, no, I think that's good. Okay, uh, any other questions on task uh, three? No. So task four, I, I don't have a budget for yet. I've been working with uh, Tom Curran at Franklin Land Trust on this. And this would be a task to take, um, again, something we're doing in the MVP3 grant, which is to prioritize the lands in the Deerfield River floodplain area for protection and identify which are the most important lands that provide flood storage capacity in the case of a you know mm -hmm. Hurricane Irene type flood right. and to ensure that those get prioritized for long-term protection and for flood storage uh, holding capacity. So they're open. they're open and available and not built up with housing or whatever exactly. other. So if well, we do have a flood, you can, they can, that's where the right. runoff can go. Well, we have CP, CPA money um, for open space if, if we need a match, but we, my understanding we, we is. We do need a match. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that because the Franklin Land Trust um, is raising an awful lot of money um, for that, for this task privately. Right. So here's the dilemma I guess I'm, I'm struggling with is, you know, grant has to be filed next week. We have to have the money for the match either in hand or we have to have it sort of in process. We have to have it, you know, oh, okay. we have well, to identify that. that. We could say that we have CPA money. I'm sorry? We have CPA money for open space is set aside. But how much are we talking? 250. Who oh. wants to dedicate? Well, that's the grant. That's the total budget. And, and and that's just a placeholder at this point. It's I mean, we, three or four million we, is we what basically Franklin is talking about raising. We could spend know, a, a larger amount of money on land yeah. conservation than that, but I, th I think we really have to back into the number that we can afford based and, on what sort of match is actually available. And again, priority. I mean, I think I, I understand this is important, but I look at a quarter of a million dollars and what we could do with that money in open space versus. Again, Trevor, I don't think we're going to use it. You just You're have not to say. Use. No, I mean you can say we have CPA money because we do. It's sitting there. Yeah. Okay. But I, I've met with Tom Curran. He's a new executive director at Franklin Land Trust multiple times. He has assured me that he they are actively pursuing money, mm -hmm. and it's so that the and most of the that was money was set aside for, for a match for APR, but APR has been so restrictive and limiting that there hasn't been a lot of APR happening. So the Franklin Land Trust has made a commitment to raise money privately, and that's what they're doing. And that way it would be still your conservation restrictions, but it's just not going through the APR program, and it's not asking for the town for 20% match, which is what you're probably, the 250 is estimated, right? That's just, again, it's just yeah. a placeholder at this point. Um, so, I've had discussions I mean, with Tom as well, and, and he thinks that he can get a pretty substantial amount of private donations for, for this just, type of I, thing. I, but I, him, but I want to know is, how much we're going to be on the hook for. Right. We, we don't know how much he's going to be able to raise, and we can't put that in as a match at this point. You have people to agree to do this. This is not like you go out and you buy right. land. I this know. is a conservation restriction, right. and you have to have specific parcels that will access the right. floodplain. It can't you be can't, just anybody. You right. just can't be anybody. So you have, we did the river corridor plan. The Franklin Conservation District did a river corridor plan. We did all the mapping. So we have identified the parcels on the, you know, town-wide basis. And those parcels have been identified. Tom is, you know, trying to raise private money so that, you know, you can approach people. Mm -hmm. You can't approach people if you have no money. And the APR program is not is very restrictive. They don't value floodlands. They, they even though they're the best, it's the best agricultural land in the world, the top five percent in the world, they consider it worthless because it's flood, floodplain, which is ridiculous. The whole town of Deerfield is a floodplain. Mm -hmm. So unless you live up on Eagle Brook, so that that's that's why we're we're doing private non money. And if you have private money, then you don't even need a town match. Right. I don't want to, yeah, I'm very concerned about. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not interested either. It can be all handled privately. But you have to, if we're going to 
do this as part of our grant, we have to say that and this that is doesn't pigeonhole us into doing it. We're not even asking for them for any money. Right. We're just putting it in as part of our plan, which is what we have we've identified as a problematic, which it is problem. We we need to access a plan, and we had been in, in going with further up communities up on the Deerfield to access their floodplains because you're trying to suck the mu the mm -hmm. water away right. before it even gets down here, and. Apparently, a, a grant application is going in, but it's you know not under us, which is what we initially thought we were going to do. So let's say, just to you know, kind of think about a number here. Let's say you had um, fifty thousand dollars to pick a number in, in CPA money. You could use that fifty thousand as the twenty five percent match for a request of one hundred and fifty thousand from the state in funds under this grant. And then you could further match that with whatever private land um, conservation monies the Franklin Land Trust comes up with, which we can't put into the budget because they, they don't exist yet, but they will fundamentally affect the amount of land that we can purchase and, and buy or the number of easements that we can buy. And Tom seemed to think that, you know, he was talking about a half a million dollars in private donations that he thought was reasonable. Um, I wish we could him. put that in as a match right now, but we obviously we, we can't do that yeah. until it exists. But this could be an ongoing kind of a thing that we apply for. I, I, I think we. Uh, I think it should each be year, ongoing. You know, and and ultimately Franklin will have matching funds that will will right. be added into the mix as well. He seemed to think he'd have something by the end of the year. So yeah, uh, you know, in hand, in hand. So that will certainly make a determination of how much ours is. I wouldn't, I mean, I don't care what we put down because I don't really feel like we're going to end up spending very much town money at all. Because in reality, I think the academy owns most of the land, which would be flood retention. No. Mm. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of it. No, actually owned that's not a parcel land. that was identified because it's all been built up with drainage and stuff because they have playing fields in there. Those playing fields are no good for flood access even though they're going to be flooded oh yeah they're flooded all the time <laughs> but that's retaining some of the water yeah but they have what they have is they have it doesn't it doesn't access the flood plain per se because they've had built up you know they're all professionally engineered and they have drainage systems underneath and all kinds of stuff so it doesn't count as when you access a flood plain the water is sucked in and it's a you know, you, you are, it's the, you have a lower, on the corridor, on the corridor mapping plan, you'll see that there's certain areas that have been identified as how you access, and the water comes in and then it whooshes back out. Whereas the academy, all the academy playing fields are all up, and they have drainage underneath, and it doesn't facilitate access. I mean, they get flooded, but okay. that's free flooding. That's so not... So this is another task that I think is, a, is really important to keep in the application just because it gives us a, a comprehensive approach to, to dealing with climate resiliency and makes our overall grant application much more competitive. So I'd love to see us keep something in here, and I think it probably would need to be based on how much CPA money you think might be available as a matching component for this coming year. Um, well, ten, we... we generate about 300,000, a little over 300,000, and 10% is set aside for open space. So it's 30,000, and we've had 30,000 set aside for I don't know how many years. How many years have we done this? Mm. A lot. So Quite a few. Yeah. few. So there's 10%. I mean, we can, you know, verify it with Brenda tomorrow. But okay. There is definitely set aside open space money. So do you think $100,000 in CPA money is a reasonable number to work with? So I'm hearing two different things. Like he needs, I, right, no, am he I needs, hearing that right? Like you need to have that money accessible, but it's not really going to be used because we're going to have private well, money. Can I, so I just want to talk, so Please. you keep talk, kind of talking around this thing. What Carolyn Thank is you. saying is true. You've got to go to a special town meeting and you just got to add, you know, People that's People have to have vote to, all this stuff. Yeah, right. no, yeah, I you'd get have that. to, once you get, I, but basically I think I get it, get but it's the setting award, our priorities. 
town meeting, right? But you'd have to basically. That's you know. all but, we're doing is but, is identifying where we'd get the money from if we had to get the money. Yeah. Okay. But I'm also saying that based on my meetings with the Franklin Land Trust, they have made a huge commitment of staff time and hustle, and it looks like it's really paying off. And they have well over any numbers that we had initially thought thought of. Okay. I mean, we're in the three or four million dollar line from what we're discussing right now. So, I mean, that's our squirrely little amount of money that we put down to keep our application going is, is not, never gonna happen. Okay. I have other priorities to spend our money, but right. we have to put down where we're getting the money from. So, and it looks good to say we're CPA money, but you can never, you're not gonna spend that money and, and you have to go to town meeting. Right. It has to be voted out by everybody. Right. We have to go through all kinds of hurdles. Okay. It's just easier to go to Franklin Land Trust and get somebody else's money yes. to do it. I agree with that. But you so, what did you want to put down? You can't. Okay. Just so um, you know, at June 30th, um, for open space on CPA dedicated, it's 172,000. It's in that account. Oh, Chris, thank you for looking that up. That's that's has to be dedicated to open space. Right. It's so. Not right. So if we say 75 of the 172. Okay. Uh, that sounds reasonable without, and we're not identifying, you know, when we identified CPA money, it's sitting there, but we don't actually have to spend it. Okay. Because I don't feel that. I mean, I, I okay. you, Chris, your, your impression from Tom was the same as my impression, that they had pretty concrete donations. Right. Lined up. I guess my thought was that that, you know, that private donation funding could be supplemental money that would allow us to purchase, you know, more easements, more acreage of easements than, you know, perhaps we might otherwise be able to do. If it leverages M MVP money, I, I, obviously we want to be able to do it. But yeah. I, I, I guess I'd want to look at the whole package because the problem is yeah. you're talking about individuals and individual property owners and all this stuff takes a wicked lot of time. That's why it does. it's wonderful to partner with the Franklin Land Trust because it's their staff time. They're, I mean, they've already donated $20,000 towards this project. So, you know, um, let's just keep working with them. They're, 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 they're really good partners on the application and it doesn't cost us anything. Right. So, and, we're, and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So we need to submit with this grant application a certification of match. You may recall that from last year's application, which you will need to sign off on. Um, and it'll identify all of the sources of match that we anticipate for each one of these tasks, including the in-kind piece. And I'll prepare that for you over the next couple of days so you'll have a chance to look at it before we submit the application. Um, but that's you know really why I'm asking these questions so that we can be as clear as possible about that. Okay. So. I, I don't have any problem putting down CPA money. It's, it's sitting there, it's dedicated to open space, but when it, we actually have to use it, I, I don't think we're gonna have to use it. And, and we'd have to go to town meeting anyway. We have right. to get town meeting approval. So whatever, if we do end up using town money, it would be the town would support it or not, you know, so. Right. Okay, well that gives me some, some pretty clear sense of, of where to go with this task. Um, so the last two tasks are relatively modest, but again, important ones in the sense that they provide a sort of, again, a comprehensive sort of approach to this issue. Task five is, is kind of extending the work that we're doing on planning and zoning for climate resiliency. We've already been working with the planning board on um, updating and revising the floodplain zoning um, what's proposed in this year's application is a comprehensive review of town bylaws to look at um, ways to promote climate resiliency and mitigate climate impacts through um, town zoning and t other town regulations. Things that we can tweak, things that we can do to try to, you know, overall promote um, new development that's more um, climate resilient and reducing impacts um, in terms of carbon impacts. And then um, 
it would also involve working with the planning board on site plan of review amendments. Um, we had started some work on green development performance standards in the site plan review, and we made some good progress on that, but did not um, finish that work. Um, so this would allow us to, to, you know, basically do that piece and update the site plan review um, work as well. And the budget for that is the total budget is twenty thousand dollars. Any questions on that one? So they're going to pay through. They they would give us fifteen for that. That's right. I I um, didn't realize that they were as generous for consultant time. That's good. Oh yeah, that we've we've had a you know number of tasks like this before. Okay. And then the last task is, is um, working with uh, Frontier High School students to engage them in climate resiliency. Um, this was Carolyn's suggestion, and I've been following up with it. Um, I've talked to um, one of the science teachers at Frontier, and they're very excited to work with us on this. They have a, um, a group of students that are in, engaged with their environmental club, mm -hmm. yeah. and th they are in turn participating in this thing called a Youth Climate uh, Summit, which is sponsored by the Hitchcock Center. And they develop an action plan for things that can be done at the high school to try to uh, address climate issues. So in the past, they've done some really creative things, um, like um, switching out the sort of the power sources in the science labs to reduce the amount of um, power that gets used. They've done composting. They've done recycling. They've done... Uh, buying glassware for the cafeteria so there's not plastic cups being thrown out, all kinds of things like that. And so anyway, this would be a way to kind of um, promote and encourage that work um, and give them a little bit of state money to implement some of their recommendations that come out of their action plan this year. It also, um, the, 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 to, um, I really, um, I afford you that UMass extension person's name, Will Snyder, he runs the Virathon. And okay. um, I think we should put in for the stipend for the teacher to run the Envirothon team. Because if you okay. have committed kids, then they should be participating in the Envirothon. And um, there is a stipend. And um, so we should put in for the stipend cost for, to the, for the teacher to run that team. Okay. And um, then we can promote. I know that the, I'm vice president of the Mass Association of um, Conservation Districts, and we sponsor the Massachusetts Envirothon competition. So um, having a frontier team, I can't remember how much it is, but Will can fill, fill you in on all the costs. And, um, okay. and maybe that teacher would be willing to um, set it up with their kids and take on that, that expense. And that could be paid for under here. Because the state pays for, we're in the environmental bond bill on this. I mean, they, they bonded money for Envirothon to right. promote that. So okay. having our school, there's not that many schools out here. It's mostly eastern schools like Lexington wins usually or, you know, is in the top three or four. Um, but there's several teams. I think Greenfield might have a team, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but Will can fill you in on all that. And so I think we should put in for the stipend just to add that in. Okay. What the heck? I will. And if we get the money, yep. then. Okay. So I will be working on this um, over yeah. the next week, and I will get you a finished version of it, um, obviously, before that the application date is due, and I also will get you a letter of support to sign and a uh, match commitment form to sign off on. There may be some other paperwork as well, I'll, um, but I'll make sure you see that. And okay. are, you, are you meeting next week? Um, well, we had, I tentatively thought maybe we'd connect the classification hearing, but we will have to have that on the 20th, so it's not um, your normal meeting schedule. The 13th. I've got a meeting on the 13th. When did we need to have it, everything signed by? The 14th. Yeah. Um, I think we we're going to have an MVP meeting on the 13th, right? In the morning? Oh, um, I guess that depends on the response. You're, you're talking about the, the time bond kickoff meeting. 
It sounds like it's probably going to be the 15th from oh, what 15th? Ke Ke that was Kevin's response um, in terms of what he was oh, available okay. for. Um, well, I can come down and sign it. Okay. I'll sign it. Okay, great. And I'll get, I'll, you know, we, I'll just, the finance committee can be mad at me or the capital committee can be mad at me. I'll sign it off saying that we have the money and capital, um, you know, just to put the application in. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time to go through this with yeah, me. Yeah, thank Appreciate you very it. much. It was good information and helps to have the discussion. And I'm does. sorry our meeting was canceled today. Yeah. Um, we could have gone over this a little bit more, but thank you. Yeah. It's, you did a lot of work since this morning when we spoke, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> it was a good conversation, and I was like, whoa, you really did a lot. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Have a good night. Have thank good you. Time. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Thank you. So uh, just moving on quickly to our um, mm, one day liquor license. One day liquor. We have a consent agenda. Um, I don't have anything on that liquor. I don't think we have a request. I think oh, this is just a, a place. I think it was just a place. Okay, yeah, good. And no we have no minutes. So no. we'll just move right on from that. No. Did, was there any select board um, reports or announcements or anything about well, we want to um, discuss real quick? I just get into the, next I, I, the bridge, small bridge money. I, mean, I went to that forum, and this the MVP is the best choice for the mm -hmm. culvert. And when I talked to Chris, he agreed. So um, the prices were good. The um, Carolyn and I did the yeah. We spoke at the sewer tr sewer and water, and hopefully that we'll get a bond bill out of that. I maybe. think that that was really good. So uh, just for the audience, um, last Friday. Carol and I went and um, spoke at the wastewater and water, kind of like a symposium that um, Senator Comerford and Natalie. We complained, uh, Natalie basically. Put, yeah, put together. <laughs> um, it was a big turnout. Was there good. was probably 90 people there, um, all kind of, you know, sewer treatment plant operators and board of health and select boards and um, all kind of interested parties. Uh, uh, DEP was there and USDA was there. And so, we all kind of discussed uh, how there's a, just a major lack of funding for infrastructure for sewer and wastewater and, and water treatment facilities. Um, so this was kind of the first step in just kind of airing out what we're doing. We talked about climate resiliency and, you know, just um, a lot of places like Montague have a, a massive system and everything is kind of moved on. The paper plants aren't there anymore. So they have a large infrastructure that they only use about 25% of it. So how do they deal with that? our failing old infrastructure. We talked a lot about, you know, the process that we've all gone through as a town over the last 10 years, but really in the last two years, kind of getting our, our project going. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So it was a good, it was good to kind of get that rolling. And we've had a couple of feedback emails from Senator Comerford's office, um, just following up on that stuff. And they'll compile a report to come out of that. And I'm sure there'll be more, more things to come. And I, I went to, Valley neighbors meeting over in Waitley on um, really mostly to do with transportation of elders to medical appointments. One of the big things in the rural public health forum that um, I testified to on the 18th of October was, um, you know, I complained that a lot of the normally people have volunteered to drive family members or friends to doctor's appointments in Greenfield, but what's happened is through cost-cutting cu measures, a lot of your specialists are moving down to Springfield, so, you know, elders are having a harder and harder time to get down to Springfield for doctor's appointments because, you know, people have to take time off and it's intimidating to drive to Springfield and all kinds of stuff. So you're, if you're older and you're helping out an older neighbor, then... You know, that's a lot of problems. So anyway, um, the Valley Neighbors is, is they're intending to get, it's a group, Waitley and Deerfield and some surrounding communities here are trying to get grant money to have, make sure that people are able to get to their doctor's appointments in Springfield because all the medical appointments have been, all your specialists are now down in Bay State Springfield. So um, we're trying to come up with transportation for our elders. Um, and that was a very successful, I think, a meeting. It mm -hmm. was good and, and potentially good opportunities. This is C1, 501, C3, nonprofit has already been formed. There's a board of, board of directors, and people are really actively um, participating. So 
I, I have really good feelings that this is gonna happen. Mm. So that's good for our yeah, seniors. Yeah, they discussed that. We had a, a COA meeting, kind of regional Senior one. working group. Yeah, working group the other day in Waitley again. And um, they did a little presentation there, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's, it's moving. So that's good. Okay. Um, um, just want to yeah, add the, please. Uh, our Board of Health did an inspection of a piece of property today. Um, yep. I was talking with the, uh, the chief who was involved with the inspection. Um, and he said the uh, property is in such de disarray that the uh, the suggestion from the group was to actually get the DEP involved. Okay. Because it's way beyond the scope of the town. Okay. Wow. So. Um, All right. That's happening. Yes. All right. So. So is that uh, um, anything that we need to do? Um, no. I'm, I'm, like that, or you guys are working on? Yeah. We'll, we'll have to work okay. on it. Um, I'll right. check with the it's board of health to hopefully tomorrow, and uh, see what. The action plan is okay uh, because I haven't talked to anybody other than the chief on it. So right, okay. But that was uh, our board of health uh, a representative, Greenfield Board of Health. Uh, so good. We're there for the inspection. And That's our great. building commissioner. Huh? And yeah. our building commissioner. Yeah, yeah. heard it was a team yeah. approach, right? Yeah. That's great. It was. That's awesome. So it was so we could identify everything. That's good. Thank you. So uh, old business. Um, Office manager building slash building and land use hiring updates. Um, I'll just kind of group all these quickly. Uh, assistant town administrator hiring next steps and town administrator hiring next steps. So it's kind of just staffing and perennial. Yep. Well, we have. Topics. <clears throat> so our first, the first one, the office manager, we had an applicant and we offered um, salary and they said no. So okay. we have not a candidate at this point, but we have additional, we received additional applications. And this was for ins inspections, <coughs> land use? Office. office manager, building and land use. Okay. Yeah, for basically to replace Priscilla on a full-time yep. basis and include, you know, some more additional responsibilities. So the, the second one? Correct. Well, we only offered it to one and she's, yeah, yeah so she's okay. going to say no, she's passed. And then, um, so I have additional. Because it was money? Packet. It was money? Yeah. I have another packet. No. I thought well, okay. that was a yep. pretty big salary we uh, offered, so that's, yeah. Yeah, no, we we'll, jumped we'll the salary looking. huge. Yeah. 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 Um, the assistant, we have been receiving applications, so I guess I just want to know what you want to do as far as the process. So um, usually candidates apply in confidence, or sometimes they do. So yeah. if you're going to do a, if you're going to interview them as a board, we just want to let them know, you know, that that will be made public. And, Is this for this um, or for the assistant? For the assistant. For the assistant, for the assistant town assistant administrator. town administrator okay. that's been advertised, and we've received some applications. So I wasn't sure, you know, there was some, you had some, um, uh, you were in a little bit of a discord about whether we were going to advertise both or one together, but we did put out the ATA, so okay. that's out there, and we are receiving. Well, we need to get the town administrator out, and we'll work on that. Okay. Yeah. So I. So yeah. So John has confirmed that he would assist that, and he's been uh, Pat sent him the information today. I saw that. that yeah. Yep. So they're yep. working on that. Okay. And um, so I guess we need to decide whether we want to do a public here, uh, interview for the assistant or we would want to do a private interview. I, I, I guess I want to see what the applications are and I want to make sure we get the town administrator out so that we can keep, uh, have a big picture. Okay. Because um, we, I don't want to, we've already hired three that have quit and we want to make sure if we're gonna go through this again, we need to figure out what we're doing for the town administrator. And then we'll do the t assistant. They were supposed to be posted together. So this needs to get resolved quickly. So no one's waiting around. And then we'll find out, we'll you know do the package. We'll look at what we have for people coming in and see what's going on. I'm, I, I don't wanna do this in isolation. This is where we've been screwing up. So I don't have much direction for you there, but um, I'll leave it to you the, guys um, to, to we get rolling on. Gonna, yeah, okay. we're going to go on this. Move it on. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I do have a, on the job description, mm -hmm. um, on the essential functions, we had edited A at one point in time, and I see it's not edited anymore. That's for what that That was what we had done with the personnel board last time. I don't and know what David's looking at, so I'm not he's sure. He's looking at the current town administrator application. Oh, I don't This know. is the one that we had 
the Kip, Michelle, the planning bo personnel board all revised and did before we went to search for the last search. And then last meeting we had here, there was another application that wasn't accurate. So I brought out this one again and we all thought that this was the one that was supposed to be done. But um, I so think, I, don't, yeah. I don't have another copy anywhere. This is all we just, I have. Yeah, we just, we have to go, what we did was change A. And so we just, what? I don't know. We, have, we gotta find the one that we edited. So that the town administrator supervises and is responsible for the efficient administration of all departments, commissions, boards, and officers under the jurisdiction of the select board? Yeah, we did. What is it supposed to say? We had some kind of team approach. And I don't know where it went, but that wasn't what I wanted. And that wasn't what you wanted, right, Dave? No, because our the people we put into the different positions, like Kevin, John, building commissioner, supervisor own departments. Yeah. The administrator is supposed to be assisting them with Support. that, but not actually supporting yeah. them and not right. actually supervising them. Right. It's a because they, they report to the board of selectmen. And so I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, we I have to know. find the wording. We had it worked out. So anyway, we'll f figure it out. Okay. Thanks. Well, let's uh, stay out of that one. Um, because this is actually a strong administrator's statement, and we do not have a strong administrator in the town of Deerfield. We might want one. Well, um, that, would, that would be up to the town. Yeah. To come up with that, but not. Well, I think the select board decides what we want to what we want to have for a, for a, you know for an administrator. Mm -hmm. um, but that again, I we beat this thing so many times. I, yeah. I'm. I'm done. We, you guys figure out what you it, want yeah. to do with that. Okay. We'll keep rolling. Um, so that's it for old business, right? Mm hmm Okay. So new business is uh, a COA appointment. That was just, we just had that as a placeholder? I, yes, I okay. did. And actually, um, yep. I had somebody that had, uh, is actually going to pass at this okay. time. Okay. So All right. Sorry. Um, vote to support uh, flooding Functional exercise proposal funded by the Franklin County MACC. I don't know what that is. MACC. Um, uh, no, it's not funded I'm by sorry, the MAC. I, yeah, I wasn't quite sure, Carolyn. Oh, okay. it, it's it's funded. I'm, I'm going to ask for money. I'm going to take this to um, the um, Western Region Homeland Security Council. Okay. I'm, I'm, I sit on that. Oh, so, right. But I felt it was more, um, it would be a stronger application to I mean, I'm going to take it one way or the other, whether you guys want to do it or not. So what, what is it, though? Support it, flooding functional exercise this, Remember proposal? we had the big exercise that they paid for last year, last November. We, hydro, that, Great Hydro yes. came and we had a big thing here. Yep. No, no, no. We oh. had that up at GCC. Remember we had the big, there was like 100 oh. people. Oh, yes, yes. If, if something had, happened. happened. The dam let go and we flooded out. Yes, how we'd get people to where right. they need to be. Right. Oh, so we had yes. a functional tabletop. Yep. So this is a functional exercise to follow up on that um, uh, that tabletop that we had because what 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 came out of that is that we don't have good evacuation routes. There's not good coordination between the um, emergency managers. If, if, if there was a call out, people work in isolation, they don't work together. Mm -hmm. And what the MAC is, is the um, multi-agency coordination oh, this is center. The exercise proposal? Yes. Okay. Yep. And so what we're doing is we're gonna um, increase cooperation between the emergency managers, increase cooperation and coordination between uh, municipal emergency plans, and formal testing of the communication because uh, it came out at our REPC meeting when um, our Regional Emergency Planning Council meeting up at FERCOG that um, Great River Hydro had to have a cybersecurity sign off. Mm -hmm. And Remember Shelburne that. and Deerfield were approached and they wanted me to sign off on it. And I can hardly do email. So I was really appalled that, you know, I have no expertise. And I, uh, and I have been pushing um, cybersecurity stuff. We are part of a Western Region p 
pilot program and you know we're, we work with the Mass State Police all kinds of stuff and we're trying to get help but mm -hmm. for us to take the responsibility to sign off on it is absolutely ridiculous so I refuse to do that and mm -hmm. so they submitted it anyway without our signatures so that was where some of this came from is that out of that meeting so I'm putting this proposal together it's about fifteen thousand dollars to um, put this exercise together for basically you know the river towns to um, get together and coordinate all this stuff so okay and you do you have any questions no. on this no or anything okay no it's it's again it's um, it's because I'm concerned about evacuation I'm concerned about coordination and there's only a few of us that really watch the river, you know, mm -hmm. the yep. gauges and stuff, and we know what it means. But, you know, I, I what also triggered this is that Kevin Fox, who is the um, emergency manager in um, Colerain, who literally we have gone out and done stakes in mm -hmm. his yard at river levels that we, for events, we know what the impact is on the North River and the Deerfield based on where the stakes are in his yard. Mm -hmm. Well, he's having, he's very sick. And so he's taking time away from doing this EMD business. And it's like, yeah, he's, a key, right. he's a key person. Yeah. And so this whole thing is so fragile. It's based on, you know, Dennis Anir up in Charlemont telling me, you know, how many gallons CFS is going through Charlemont right now. It depends, you know, where they were, what it translates to down here. And mm -hmm. there's just, it's terrible. We have to have some more capacity and we have to have more formal stuff. So this, by doing this, we're going to be able to coordinate better, have more capacity, identify more people involved, and then have this coordination happen. Okay. And hopefully this will be a basis for maybe some more river gauges, more other things that we can ask for from Homeland Security, whatever comes out of this. Okay. So Sounds good. So I would like to make a motion that the Deerfield Select Board support this. Okay. Uh, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Thank you guys. Sure. Um, okay. I'm going to take it to the um, November uh, 19th meeting, and hopefully I'll get funded. Other support? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, John John votes as the um, police and mm -hmm. Marine P's from Shrewsbury is the Board of Health, so Great. or the Public Health rep. So we already have. Enough Some help. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, discuss process for disposal um, of the um, property at Merrigan Way. This is the the um, property we just took back at the special town meeting. Um, so we're getting interest in the property, and we we really need to kind of decide what we want to do. I guess last time there was a RFQ RFQ for for businesses or you know do entities we that want to come and. Um, purchase and so we kind of want to have an so idea. So this is an RFP versus an RFQ, right? Yeah. Well, this is what this is, uh, this what, is what you had used last time. Right. This right? is what you used for the Oxford. Okay. So this, this is, is just what an I example found. of yes. Kind this of is just what, what you had done. done last time. But you had talked about being expedited permitting. You talked about incentives. You talked mm -hmm. about you know some of the things what you were expecting from them. You know. Right. So I just wondered if this was a similar. I can take this and update it, but I thought we should just make sure yeah. you wanted all these same conditions. The other thing I think before we do this, what um, Kevin um, was away today and couldn't mm -hmm. be here tonight, but he very much wants to adjust the plan and make yes. sure we deal with the right of way and easement issues of American mm -hmm. Way, sort of dead ending. And, right, because um, the water comes in and remember it went under their property and we should have a right of way to that or figure yeah, out that. something. And yeah. now we have, well, now we have a new water line that comes up American Way. I, I was going to say, I thought we changed the That's, water so it comes we did. up. But then, but then, and then there's also where the sewer kind of goes out, and there was other some other. Well, stuff there's something that was I think that Merrigan Way, as a public way, you know, it terminates it, it at a certain point right. right into Dumont's property. Like it there's did. no, yeah. So that, so if the parcel is before that, I think there's some easement issues that we need to. We should create solve it so it's you right know, away. Right, it right works issues. for whoever else would be coming so, in. So right, um, exactly right. So Kevin. I haven't read so this what yet. Lisa had suggested is that one, um, if you're amenable to that, that Kevin. Um, you know, mark up sort of the plan of what yep. he thinks, or we look at the plan, you know, yes. Kevin as well, whatever, yeah. but yep. look at the plan, mark it up, and then they'll tell us, you know, they'll refile it or tell us how to refile it. So. Um, can we, um, we, I don't want to wait two more weeks, though. Um, can we just have Kevin look at this 
can we look at this? Can we then have Kevin mark up some stuff and then can we vote to move on the RFP? Well, I don't think we don't have anything written out yet. No, 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 but I meant I mean, yeah, yeah process to go go forward, yeah. but we we really I wanted to get some time to to read this. I mean, really the main thing for me is I'm looking for economic development. Um, I've had we've had a couple businesses interested. I oh, wanted I to be able to have something That's to be I able to provide wait. to them and say, here's the lot. You know, I'm happy to motion to just move, have Kevin move the. Can can we and then have for, and then then easements. individually us um, give feedback mm -hmm. so that you can move this. I, I I just I don't want this to Linger. wait and for another two weeks before us. You know, mm -hmm. this needs to get done so that if people are serious, they can. Yes. I think people want to move by the end of the year. And, yes. Uh, we're getting we're run, literally running out of time. So so, so part, we'll have part of this is to get this done before the end of the. So we'll have Kevin look at the plan, yep. see where the easements that he needs, yep. and we'll then have, have the market Lisa up. We'll get that, that going and revise of the plans because I don't have that. to get done before we you know. And then we'll make it, we'll make we'll uh, update we'll, this. It's our responsibility. Send out what's been adjusted or dra a draft. We will get back with any comments. And okay. I'll I'll read this a little bit because I was not around for the first. One okay. of this, I don't really I, remember. Right. I mean, I think it looks really good. It's I mean, I think it just needs to be updated. But I guess I wonder, you do um, have in here about, um, you know, you'd be willing to uh, provide certain certain incentives, you know, TIF incentives and stuff. So I just want to make that's sure you're all cool sure with all of that. All right. if, if they're yeah. going to bring, <laughs> if they're going to bring jobs into town, yes. Yeah. yeah, right. depend, yeah. Depending yeah. on how and many. Because you had put a certain jobs. amount. And I think what we want criteria. is, we want someone that has proof that they're actually going to build. Right, and we can. Right. I think we can put that we into yes, that, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. contract I mean, cause we versus last time. Right. Yeah, that was crazy. Yes. Right. So, so actually, some of the things that are in there now. I worked but, with the assessors okay. for the TIF. Yep. You did before. on that, and it was a declining mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, schedule. Okay. Uh, and I we, and I I've already reached out to John Cordaire before. Um, I mean, not recently, but in the last couple months, we. Um, I think it was in late summer. So um, to get an idea of what, because John and I were did sat on a, the TIF thing too. Mm -hmm. So he's he's fine with whatever we come up with. Um, All right. You know we have guidelines what we've done before. I think we want to stick with those guidelines. Yeah. Um, they've worked for us in the past, so I'm happy with them. And and we can put that together really quick. That is, you know, just mm -hmm. a John is willing to do that. So. Yeah. So we'll look at that. I'll, I'll read this too and get up to speed on that. And then um, maybe all of us just pass that information into Diana and then have her rewrite the proposal and we can get it out. If Kevin, whatever Kevin thinks we need to do, yeah. I we mean, need I to get that done. I knew what they were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was the water, which I think is fixed now, but, but you're right, it was the way that Merrigan ended, and we right. need to create a little bit of a spot there so people have rights away or whatever into, into different things. And, um, <coughs> you know, I know I, so, I'd like to sell it. As so one I, I would make a motion that once we've reviewed it, Kevin's fixed it up, the lawyers looked at it, that we vote, that we vote now to distribute this RFP as soon as possible. Okay. Is that all right with you, Dave? Yeah. Okay, I make that yeah. motion then. Uh, I'll second it. Any further discussion? Um, the only other thing I'd like to add is mm -hmm. um, to somehow we can get an assessment on the uh, right of way going out to South Main Street. That's a, on that property. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the town owns it. It's not a right of way. But, um, and seeing what the feasibility of making that functional. Out the back side there on yeah. the like by the post slip? Is that no, what you mean? No, it actually comes out right by my house on the opposite side of the road. So it's diff it's different than that? Yeah. I that, I that's Coates Ave. That there's there's, well, there's a, Yeah, there's it's, another spot it's out? right just past uh, uh, where Powers lived. Oh okay. There's I've never there's, seen it. Yeah, if okay. you look in the maps there's there's a there's an access there. It yeah. just hasn't been used for years. I or think something? the site is degraded enough that it shouldn't be a problem to be able to do a, a right away. Huh. 
Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's defined in the, in the deeds. Right, but I meant so, a, a usable right yeah. away. It's just, the site is so degraded. It's just adding another culvert over Blacksmith Brook, which isn't a brook unless we get an awful lot of water. But well, it's, the site is, a de, is declared a degraded site, so a lot of that conservation stuff is... Yeah. I mean, you can, you can do stuff that you would not normally be able to yeah. do. Um, but I know that that's has a good impact idea. on South Main Street, but... but that, yeah, but that's a good idea, actually. It's depending on what goes in there and stuff. It's it might be... Um, it's a good emergency. At least it would be a good emergency exit. Okay. Um, I made that motion. Did you second it? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I don't know which I want. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll tell Trevor we voted it. Um, next item on the agenda is the USDA Phase 1. Trevor's got to be there for this. Um, and this is for the engineering costs? Yeah. We just voted on the art to send the RFP out. Okay, great. So are you ready for the... Um, yeah, I was just looking at that lot a second. Yeah. Okay. Just so I understood. So there's a spot, because that's the one I knew of, but... That's not... Oh. Coach Ave is over here. way over here. Oh, so that one's there. Yeah, it goes right out to South Main. That's drainage easement. Oh, okay. I didn't really realize that. Huh. Okay. But it's wide enough for... It's a, it would at least be a good emergency exit, even if not a regular exit. Hmm. All right. So this one, yeah, this one showed this easement here. Yeah, that's That was extended for the Dumont. Right, for that extra parcel, right? Yeah. So that he could go into that. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we were trying to figure there was, out this. There was a water main that used to go right through here. Yes, and now we're coming down with that. Yeah. I think that's all been done. So, yeah, just we'd have Kevin look at that and get that done. Okay, great. Move it on. So we're now at the um, USDA phase one. Yes. Uh, so I, I don't have you, you have a copy of it. I don't, you probably haven't read it yet. Or no, you're probably just no I just it. got it. I just thought um, I, I read it. Um, I have some questions and some edits on it. Um, this has uh, been revised from, so David, USDA has been negotiating as well. The price on the project, so they've they've been going around um, back and forth. You know, I think if engineering for the phase one of the project was about two million bucks, um, revised that down to one seven two five, and then we revised it again down to one six something. But I um, now does that come off our grant or does it come off our loan? Comes so everything so everything comes off of our first. Uh, first, our money, then the gr then the loan, and then the grant. Grants last okay. for any of that stuff. So, but what I wanted to do is kind of have you guys read it, see if you had questions okay. on it. I, I haven't read it because I no, just got it tonight. Exactly. Take your time. I'm going to meet with David on uh, Friday morning just okay. to tell him. Uh, just a have a few of my questions answered. I, you know, I found okay. one area that we just need to fix. Um, and then just get your input on, and then, um, you know, get moving. So, okay. So, now, so if, you guys when you that. say that USDA is um, negotiating for us, to what, what are they, what, what did they? Well, there's been a lot of revisions on, you know, from the initial time that, that the whole project was done. Right. That was about $2 million in design. And then um, their engineers and Rebecca, uh, is it Rebecca? Yes, Rebecca. Let's get that one. Um, Rebecca, um, <coughs> excuse me, bless you, had um, moved some money from one, you know, certain pots to other pots. So, so there's oversight, there's bidding, and then there's the actual design work. And then talking with Dave, um, he was concerned that some of the money went too far out of oversight. Um, 
you know, towards design. So, it, you know, it wasn't any less. He just wanted to put it into the into the oversight because he said, look, we really need the oversight is the key to a lot of that stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, so we've got this down to one. It's just under one seven, one six something. And okay. Take your time and go through it. You'll find here. Let me find that for you because it's a lot okay. easier. This is all. This whole uh, format is different than we normally do because it's all got to be in USDA's format. These are the two sheets that you really want to look at. Okay. So this is his breakdown of the task, and then you can follow along in this okay. each section. We'll discuss right. what each item is. So take the week and read it. Um, let me know if you have any questions or changes you want to have to it. And then um, I'm, I've got some questions I want to ask and some changes I want okay. to make. And then I was going to say I'll try to do this and we can talk about it Friday because I think Friday's is close to me. Exactly. That'd be great. That'd be yep. great if you have any, anything then. I'm going to meet him Friday morning at, if you want to come. Um, what time are you? I'm going to meet him at 9. Well, we have 10. We're supposed I know. to go down to DOT. Yeah, it's gonna, I'm going to meet him right North Anthony. Oh. Okay. Well, so. how about, do you want me to come here and then we'll, we'll go ride together? We'll together. Yeah. yeah perfect. Okay. Yep, that'd be great. Um, and then have Dave, you know, go through it too if he has any questions or whatever. Uh, we got to make sure that Kevin and John get down to DOT too. Okay. Because they're we're coordinating. I mean, this is the coordination of everything. Okay. And we're getting this straight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because we're having. Diane has had a lot of conversations with Tim this week already, just okay. aside from us. So then we'll okay. kind of pile all that together. Um, because they're supposed to use their big board to pull up, you know, the whole area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that will give us the actual square footage and great. What's underneath the ground and all that? That'll be great. I hope um, it resolves everything. So, so this um, this proposal has gone to us, um, USDA. So they've been looking it over as well, and it went to Lisa. So Lisa's reviewing it now as well. Okay. Because it's a completely different contract form than we normally have because it's got to be you know it's a specific and you'll see it's a specific engineering format that are used for these projects because All of right. USDA so look through that and then we'll right. talk about that so actually this is engineering for the new phase one not the old phase one well 11.4 yeah yeah yep yeah, okay. exactly yes not the um the not initial, the, yep, yeah, not the circular. Okay, and that that process um, is moving forward. So that the secondary clarifier, um, I think we've said this before at another meeting, maybe when Dave was here, but Keith is getting those that those rectangular clarifiers up and running. Um, motors are they, done. Are they? Um, are are they? Um, has it gone back out to bid? No. I think it's going out. This week, I think it's, it's imminent. So it's either this week or next week. Is that going to be okay with USDA? Mm -hmm. okay. What do you mean? Well, um, because we wanted to make sure that we included this part of the project in the whole project. So it counts towards our loan, counts towards our grant. Right. I think yeah. It, he had that in his original uh, plan, um, fixing that, and then we broke it out. So we'll we should discuss that on Friday when we see him. Yeah. And make sure you can, because the whole idea was to roll that back into it, because it was in our original plan to USDA. It's not in the 11-4, but we already have it broken out in the, you know, right. in that first phase. So, okay. and I think, so the whole idea really is to go out for that first. I, I have to, the way to keep straight is just, you know, to do a timeline, mm -hmm. and then on the timeline, do the, what you're actually doing. And that's mm -hmm. the only way I can kind of... No problem. Keep, keep it straight. That's I know. Confusing. I know. A lot going it on. sounds terrible, but if you do that little thing, then it's fine. you keep looking at it and you yep. understand what's going on. Yep. I, I, that's the only way I can keep it. Oh, straight. I know. I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, I talk to them a couple times a week, so it's. Yep. All right. But I'll, yeah, I'll it's hard to keep, look at this. Keep straight. Okay. Please. Yeah. Look that over. Um, and then, um, and we'll hear from Lisa, I guess. Yep. No, she's got any questions. Um, we've 
already done that. So, town administrators report and updates, and you were kind enough to give us a nice um, list of all the stuff that you've been working on. Yeah. You find that here because I had that printed somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Highlights for October. Do you want me to read that, or you want to go over any of that? Oh, I mean, you've been a little sure. quiet. I'd like to have you. <coughs> sure. Um, Thank you. I went to the CIPC meeting. We got the CIPC notices out. So Thank capital requests are due back on December 3rd. Um, and that's uh, in the works. Uh, there's been two uh, Deerfield uh, COA meetings. And then in, we've also had two uh, working group meetings since the last time I reported to you. And the Deerfield Council on Aging meetings, we've been talking about um, Deerfield uh, senior issues around transportation. Uh, primarily transportation. Yes. You know, Carolyn's mentioned that too. So, uh, so we're going to have a meeting. Um, Bob Decker now has been appointed to the COA, and he's also a representative to FRTA. So right. we're going to be setting up a meeting with FRTA and PVA uh, or P PVTA, PVTA yep. to try yep. to, uh, or at least FRTA to begin with, but try to figure out what the Sunderland aspect of yeah, that. why exactly. what what's happening it's with that? Difficult. Why we can't? Because we Christina and I had a meeting with FRTA already, and they. They felt uh, we they wanted to, uh, for us to ask them to come out and and talk about these transportation issues with the seniors and find out what is happening when they're calling dispatch if they're not mm -hmm. getting the demand response services they're supposed to be getting um, because they feel th the FRTA feels they should be so we right. have sort of a dis you know a disconnect in what's happening so um, so that's something Deerfield wants to do but it is a bigger issue around transportation getting the seniors from the other two communities to the Deerfield Center and especially yep. the seniors from Sunderland right. so we need to figure that out so we yes. had that discussion so yep. the working group is a is a larger group made up of the representatives of all the COAs right now um, and the Valley neighbors is sort mm -hmm. of participating in that as well and um, the idea is that in addition to identifying the needs of a future center which is the primary goal of the working group but it's also to look at along the way the senior services and how they're provided by the three communities in the three communities and you know a variety of other things around um, you know delivering the senior services but um, and the three group, the three towns are really interested in working together on both of those aspects. Um, so, and then at that meeting we had, uh, and Waitley, the BOO members were there too, so they mm -hmm. participated in that bit, so. Um, personnel board has been organized and facilitated a kickoff meeting, then you had, of course, a joint meeting yep. with them, so. That was, that was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Barb yeah. and I went to a great training today. It was a, a wellness, uh, it's the annual Maya wellness sort of conference, but it's about healthy employees, and it's uh, right. right in line with what the personnel board was talking about, kind of yes. getting on that. So uh, Barb and I want to invite the REAP folks to come in and our wellness folks to come in and maybe do like a little bit more of an outreach and a presentation. So we talked about getting that done. Thank you. Um, the MVP meetings, we had a kickoff meeting last week for the green infrastructure, the, the rain gardens mm -hmm. and the... Um, the uh, tree boxes where we discussed them at length and the design for them, the integration of them into the complete streets project and all the other streetscape and planning projects we're doing in the center. Um, we talked about uh, the schools and integrating them as well. So that, mm -hmm. um, and then I think like, as Carolyn said, there was supposed to be a kickoff meeting today for the culvert part of that project. And I think that's been postponed at this point. Okay. Well, yeah, cause I mean, part of the match is, was having you show up, so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. today, yeah. Um, so the solar development on the landfill, that negotiation has continued. Um, so we have received, we invoiced them for the $10,000 as part of our RFQ. Um, they are paying for our expenses to work on this pro process. So we have received that money um, and we have um, had the conference call on the solar development, the, the first round, and there's a contract, a draft contract that's already been sent to Lisa now. So Beth okay. has been working on that too. So, um, so, so that's, that's been getting closer? Yes, yeah. Or is it just... No, nope, it's constantly negotiating. No, no, it's getting closer. It's it's basically um, in final. It's been negotiated for the most part, and um, it's been now sent to Lisa to review the the legal the, um, the legal terms, and then yeah, and then I think Beth will come and back that, in and make and a Beth, presentation and Beth to you. Reviewed that. Yes, and yeah. Beth negotiated. Us, yeah, Beth right? yeah. was involved mm -hmm. in the Good. negotiations. Yes, okay. and then she will come back and um, you know talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, 
So the building, well, we didn't actually, we had one hiring process for building and land lease. We're gonna do another. Um, all this, the closing and the sale of New England Natural Bakers, that's all set, as you know. Um, just the regular stuff, a lot of this stuff is just regular processing. Um, we did receive, I sent a notice of award to GRLA, which was the town building's assessment. That's mm -hmm. who we had awarded. We received the price proposal and the town building's assessment committee met today. And we- yeah. well, I'm um, curious how that went. It went really great. So they made a recommendation on, on the negotiation. So um, in the RFP that I am doing the negotiation um, to get to the fee, obviously, if it's, if it's, I'm trying to get it below the budget, if it's below the budget, then we would just sign the contract. If if, if and it's the budget's above, then what we, come we had back. Set, it, set aside for that. 40,000 okay. is the yep. budget. Yeah. Um, so they, they gave, uh, they've made recommendations. That's so why I'll go back to GRLA and ask for what, you know, just basically yeah. give them. So we're, that. yeah, basically we, we got the, the price proposal and we'd like, it has some uh, reimbursables in it. We want that to be in there as a fixed fee. Um, and they are, uh, they changed the, they were going to do an independent estimator that was going to cost um, more than the budget. So the group feels that um, if they can provide us uh, references on who's in-house is going to do the estimating and kind of the uh, give us project references that where they did their own estimating in the past, we would be okay with that and then we would be within Instead the budget. Of hiring an outside yeah. estimator? Okay. Yeah. So that's the recommendation. So we'll proceed with that. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, we had been, as I think Carolyn had mentioned this at the personnel board, so since back in, I think, March or April of this year, I had asked council to do the training for the, um, you know, the new trainings for board and yes. committee people. Yes, and, yes. and so they had been, uh, Lisa told me they were going to be working on the packets and in the bills. I've been seeing that they're billing us for doing right. all of the training materials. So seen. now the training materials are finally complete. And Kate has communicated with us, and she said that she wants, she want to do the training the end of December or early January. And, you know, I told her, you know, I th I'm sorry, but yeah, I think that is like the long. worst time of year. Mm -hmm. And I have been asking them since March, oh, yeah, March. to do this right. last year because yeah. I said I wanted it when the new people were mm -hmm. elected and appointed. Right. And for months, this has been on our invoice that they've been working on it. So I have to say I'm a little discouraged because my staff, you know, staff is also... They do it any sooner? Kate says that her schedule is very full. So I've asked her to reconsider that. I at least want to get the employment stuff right. done because that yeah. should be done. And, you know, that's a little more if we do that around, you know, the calendar year end, that's it's com okay because yeah. it's employee stuff, but not at the end of December. It needs right. to be like early, you know. That's not going to go work. No, exactly. People so are it's not even in town somewhat. Exactly. Holidays. So, I mean, we obviously would have a lot, we'd be able to compel staff a lot more than board and committee members. So, yeah, and if we can't get that done, then I'm almost thinking we just wait now until the spring. But I really, you know, I don't want to wait on the employment training. That's, no, no, that's, that you has know, to happen. Yes, has harassment and all that. So, yep. so anyway, so we're okay. she said she would look at, relook at her schedule and okay. get back to me. Yep. So, December's um, just not going to work then. Nope. No. I'm, I'm sorry. No. Um, Let's see. That's a lot fun. of this is just regular. So I did communicate with DOT, and I'm sorry I wasn't at your last meeting, so I didn't, you know, didn't give you an update. I was sick, but mm -hmm. um, so I talked to Tim. I, I got back. I got sort of sent back and forth because when I called, I sort of indicated I was we were working on a complete streets project. So I ended up getting sent to their complete streets people. Mm -hmm. But then I ended up talking to their person yeah. that is the correct person, the person I think you're going to yeah. talk to as well. But yep. so Tim Myers, and he he did explain to me. So you know. I want to. I want to. You know, give Please. you this yep. understanding, so yep. you so can. We're aware hopefully, we it's the same thing that's said. But that basically, the town, the the state owns the layout of um, Sugarloaf, Park Street, Conway oh, Street, and so the layout means the road, the sidewalks, and everything underneath the road. Anything mm -hmm. in the you know the layout of the road. Um, the town, according to them maintains everything above ground in those areas. So that means you do the snow removal, you would do any, um, you know, if there was a, a minor imperfection in a, a sidewalk or something, that, that that would be the town's responsibility. They're saying the town is responsible for repairs and maintenance to even the sidewalks. If you want to do anything under the ground, they own it. 
and they want to be clear about that. So you would have to get permission for them from them to do that. And we do when like we do the sewer main when we open it, like Kevin's working with them and they open, you know, they got permission to do that. Um, if a um, if a business owner, the church, the post office, or even the town had initiative to do a project along one of those ways, like mm -hmm. we were gonna do an accessible sidewalk, like the post office. They just did an accessible crosswalk in front of the post office because the post office was gonna do a reconstruction proje mm -hmm. project in front of the post office, so it was tied together. So they have a whole list of, of things on the project to make these, because they, they recognize a lot of the sidewalk isn't accessible or it needs to be fixed right. or terrible. needs to be upgraded, that the curb cuts aren't there, that's not. So they have a whole plan for this, but they don't have funding. It's, it seems to be, is, as I said, if somebody is gonna do a project along those ways and goes to them and says, you know, we're gonna, we wanna do this and, you know, mm -hmm. um, then they'll try to look at that project and maybe put some money toward it. So when we go to, do complete streets, it, you know, maybe you'll get in a different indication, but I got the indication that it would be similar. Like we, they would want to know everything that we were talking about. Um, and, and if they, if we started working on a project and they had that identified as a project on their list and maybe had some money to put toward it, that they, you know, would work cooperatively with us. But I didn't get the sense that, you know, we were gonna present our complete street plan and they would say, oh, that sounds great and let's partner together and see how we can, mm -hmm. you know, get the funding all to work. So with that all said, they also, you know, strongly believe, as it has been said numerous times, that, you, that the town has put parking spaces on the state highway along Park Street, which you mm -hmm. know that that has happened. And we've lined those, and we line them, you know, every time we reline, we, re we line them. So, and, you know, periodically they have meetings, and they look at Google Earth, and they know that we have parking on the state highway. They're not gonna enforce it. They don't, you know, they do feel it's a rural road for the most part, so they're not, it's not that they're gonna come out and enforce it. But if we wanted to do anything there, if we wanted to do work there or change that in some way, they would enforce it. So we would be, um, because they can't allow us to, they can't sort of knowingly be part of a project where we would put parking spaces back mm -hmm. in right. the state highway yep. <laughs> because Correct. they're not supposed not to be there. Yep. So I think that, you know, is pretty much the gist. And they are open to you, to the town, owning, owning, the, these things, They're, they would be willing to. In fact, when I when we talked, when I had originally talked to Daryl, another person about this, like six months ago, he rapidly sent me the form to say, you know, the form that we would have to fill out to take it, you know, to mm -hmm. own it. Um, so they're definitely, especially given the, the parking and stuff like that, they're willing to have you own it. Um, and of course, Vinod, our, our consultant from Time Bond, has recommended that um, if you really want to make changes during these processes, that that might be something to consider. But at the same time, you need to consider with great thoughtfulness, um, you know, the underground infrastructure right. under there. They'd and you would have to, they'd have speed. to bring all that up to 100%. And he, and Tim admitted that too, that he understood that that would be a condition that they mm -hmm. would have to bring all that in, all their right. infrastructure would have to be all brought up, um, you know, before that discussion would occur. So, okay. um, that's, so we'll see what, that's what I know. So the other, uh, the other thing I want to make sure we're talking about, um, in the map it system, they have a system of map it. Are they putting in the closures up at Wapping Road? When we, every time we flood out five and ten, and mm -hmm. you know the by Richardson's Candy Kitchen, do, are they putting that in because that gives that the yeah that triggers things. So we we, we want to make sure that that goes into the map it system, and um, I don't know. I mean, I we we do need to look at what what our options are. With yeah, mm -hmm. I think yeah. so. Trevor has the first. We've gotten a very very basic draft from. Um, for the complete streets, he's not done. It doesn't have. It's not filled in. But the, I wanted to have something to, to at least talk to the town common committee last night. So, so you can, you know, so you know to speak to DOT. Like the projects that are have Project been prioritized the town are the ones that would be impacted in the DOT layout. So right. we'd have to. You, you do to have to think about what, what you want to do for that. Yep. So okay. All right. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so, and then I have been meeting um, with, also as part of the Council on Aging and the senior, um, senior stuff and budgeting, I am meeting with Christina on working on her FY21 budget and her capital request because, as you know, last yes, year we didn't get the budget, we didn't hit the mark with the budget, right. um, and we want to re, uh, re-look at the grants, make sure we're doing uh, everything we can as far as getting all Did the grants. Did she go to that and, um, seminar? The did conference. she the did conference? she went to the conference yes okay. the MCOA conference yep. yeah right. so um, yep yeah, so we so we she's just um, we're looking over the formula grant the SIG grant um, you know operational mm-hmm. issues other grants that might be available there are transportation grants available through elder affairs um, so all of those things plus and the I budget also yeah in in conversation with that budget and I've talked to Kevin about our town taking over the plowing they're like not paying Sokolowski's to do the maintenance for that building yeah. and we'd have the town mow and the town I mean the whole idea is we funded a, a part-time for mower and then um, it's you know it's our it's a town property we, we should plow it so um, I think the plan was Kevin was talking about that he would take over that this winter you know Correct. I think it was kind of like finish up the yeah. season and I told Christine it's I mean she it's her building and department when she wants to end certain services she she can end those and then we would you know I just we want to make sure that we're covered and just discuss that like how yes. who's taking over what does Kevin need more funding or whatever exactly. to, yes to, Kevin to deal and with I that? did discuss Fine. that correct yeah. yes just yes. let us know what you need to make sure that that happens um, yes and yes, then, I think that is another component of it because the, Kevin and I have talked about that in light of that question about the budget and his agreement to take it over in the, yes, the winter time. Right. Um, but he he is he may need as, some help. For yes, that. he's acknowledged it. He's yep. he's getting more and more pressure to take over public spaces. So yep. he just, we just want to make sure that support. he's he's supported. Yeah. Um, the other item was custodial services as well. Um, yeah because um, it's a big chunk of money for that depart- that building and they kind of feel maybe not getting, maybe they think they could do it's, something different. So, it's, it's not enough. I mean, you have a senior center where you have seniors on almost a daily basis. That's the other thing that right. is difficult to navigate about the operations of your senior center because right. you have a boo and you know with all due respect it's it's not meeting consistently um and and the in some you know the the senior center is only supposed to be open three days a week but it's really it's open, open like five. five days a week and then some it's it. yeah, yeah but it's 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 not like cons- it needs to be the main the cost to do it so we should look at our custodial contract for for our town and see how it ties in go, for the, here and there. Should did we, we go out to bid lately? Sh- we have not in many years. I, I haven't seen the contract. I, I think you have a yep. copy of I it. Do. Yep. So my, my goal is to just look at that again. And, you know, I like Rick a lot. Let's look at that. Is there, you know, just talk about, I just want to see the bill, what he does. Are we tackling everything we want? Maybe there's issues yeah. that we should survey the people. Right. Are they getting what they envision? I think really it's a, envision it's a frequent, it is a frequency issue too. I mean, just once yeah. a week in an active building, in an active in that building, public right. building. He's here often, but yeah, he's you know, here more. No, he's more only here. there once. Here, right. he's here twice, but and, and it's, it and may not be enough. And, and they have a more active building that. than we do. <laughs> So let's let's yeah, just wait, talk yeah. about they that. They do, yeah. No, they have out. much more activity in their building than we do. We don't have the kind of you know we have people right. coming you know infrequently, but they have people there yeah. regularly. So we um, want to see for the money that they're spending for contracted services for for custodial services. Right. Is yeah, there we're looking other right. things that. So that's just something we want to look at as well yep. for this season, yep. this budget. And then of course we um, we have uh, started with our Dollar General um, mediation. That's that's yep. probably correct, and yep. um and that we want to have a joint meeting. We want to set up a joint meeting, so I don't want to forget to talk to yeah, talk about that. that. Was the, uh, uh, we were going to do that on November eighteenth. Right. Um, it would be in an exec session because we're still in you know litigation or and mediation. And that was in the evening, right? Right, I and mean, we we're supposed to be a joint meeting with the planning board. So okay. I just want you to check. What your time calendar. would you would that be? Six o'clock, I think, Carolyn. Okay. Monday the eighteenth. I can. I I have three meetings that day, but. They're all during the day, so I can make it. Okay. It's my anniversary. Is it? Well, for my first first date with my wife. Oh, yeah. nice. 
Um, and then the last thing I just want to mention, so the tax rate setting is going along. The assessors met last night and they signed all the LA uh, forms, which are all the values. Right. So those should have, I assume, Karen got those into DOR today. So Good. we'll set the classification hearing. Um, we won't be able to do it next week because of the holiday on Monday and the timing with DOR. We're a little concerned. So we'll go to the 20th and we're still ahead, a little bit ahead of last year. Um, okay. But we'll have hopefully that classification. Um, That'll be the 20th, the 20th of November. Yeah. Yeah. And then the uh, personnel board, I believe, is going to meet before that. And um, I don't know if they'll make a recommendation at that time about your cost of living, but usually this is around the time that um, we put the budget memo out. Yep. And in the budget memo, we um, usually do. I did we do had in the past, last year we didn't, but in the, I guess in the past, I, that was before me, but you used to try to put out some indication some to the departments around this yes. time of what mm -hmm. the coal is going to be, if it's going to be a level service budget, if it's going to be, you know, just, just some indication of operational, right. in, you know, okay. direction. So, so I thought we could do that on the 20th as well with the classification yep. hearing, like budget kickoff. Sure. And then we'll get, because we usually get the memo out by the last week of uh, November. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. I think that's it. And then I have okay. some, I put some resident concerns, you know, I'm just kind of, kind of keep you in the loop. We mm -hmm. had numerous calls about Halloween, um, mm -hmm. which now we've, <laughs> <laughs> we've solved <laughs> and many. Um, Saturday was great. <laughs> it was a bonanza it's a safety, for the kids. I'll yeah. Tell you, it was safety good. issues. They didn't um, make out it doesn't very matter. Good. And of course we're handling all the claims, you know, from the tree. Uh, we had some yeah, tree, we had dam some tree this, damage. Yeah. So we're, those are still in the worst. And, um, uh, just a very couple other things, but yeah, working through those. So, thank you. That's what I've got. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Okay. Um, I think that's it, right? Or we, we have a um, executive session. Okay, we're going to make that one quick. I've got to get Caleb home. Um, so. See our, yes, our next meeting would be the, so the 18th at 6, a joint meeting with planning. Six. And then the 20th. And, and then the, the 20th. 20th. Yep. Actually, we're meeting Friday. And we're meeting Friday. Yeah, and at that DOT. is posted. Now, do you want me to change that to 9? Yes, just, just in to case. be on the safe yep, side. Just be, okay. Yeah, just all right. to be safe. Great. Thank you Thanks. all for coming. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yep. Good night. Um, so I would um, make a motion to enter into executive session, and then we would. Um, just adjourn and go home so we will not be coming out to public um, Make after. that motion. So, so the motion would be pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 21B, Paragraph 2. I'm to get the second. I'm oh. <laughs> What's that? I said I'm going to make that motion. Oh, <laughs> You're no. going to second it? Yeah, I meant to um, say second. So to conduct strategy sessions and preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel uh, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, police chief contract, and uh, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 21A, sec, uh, paragraph six, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, and uh, or value of real property if the chair declares that, an, uh, declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of a public body, recreation, general municipal purposes, which I do. So I, are you second? Second. I. Uh, any further discussion? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, David Wolf. Thank you very much. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.